Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a DIY repair project and what we're going to be fixing is some hidden water damage just like it says in the title. And this is one of the restrooms in my house where basically for some time now the water has been dripping out of the shower there behind the wall and caused all this damage that you see here. And initially I wasn't even going to make this video, I was just going to do the repair and carry on with my life because if you own a property, if you own a house, you know that you're always doing all sorts of little repairs like this. But then I realized that, you know what, some of you may enjoy watching this kind of repair and some of you may learn from it, even if you don't do it yourself, even if you call a contractor or a handyman or something like that, this can show you how some people may want to blow this up into a really huge job so they can make more money out of you. I'm going to show you how you don't need to allow that to happen. You can take care of this yourself or show somebody else how you want it done so they don't make it into a gigantic project and charge you a bundle. So that's the whole point. I don't want you guys getting ripped off. And if you enjoy watching DIY videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I do some kind of DIY repair project, tool reviews, coupon videos, all sorts of great stuff like that. You'll be notified every time by hitting that subscribe button. Anyway, so what's going on here is that I had started doing the project and then I decided to turn on the camera and videotape all this. And be happy that I didn't show you the beginning because trust me, there's nothing more gross than seeing all that black mold that I ripped out of there. You would have barfed up really bad. And right there I'm pointing out where that's the shower, that's the wall, and that's the floor area that I had to rip everything out. And I'm going to do some of this stuff as a voiceover because some of the audio in the restroom is not that great because it gets kind of echoey and stuff in there. So I'm going to do some voiceover along the way and tell you exactly what's going on. And back there, like I said, from that little corner right there is where everything started, where the water kind of like dripped out of the shower behind the molding inside the wall, kind of dripped back there and then creeped its way under the floor. And over time, it just dripped down and dripped down and, uh, you know, just allowed a lot of water to sog in there and you obviously don't notice it even though it was all really soggy when i ripped it up you don't notice it when you're just standing there and looking on it or down on it or just uh walking around there it's not something that's really obvious until it became really bad and what happened was that little corner back over there so the paint started getting a little wrinkly so i decided to poke at it and my finger went right into the wall and that's what happened that's what started this whole project so let's uh, get going and start doing some of this repair and I'll show you what needs to be done. All right, guys, so here we are looking at a different angle of the floor and I'm talking about the damage that took place as the water basically ran along the shower pan and ran along the wall. For some reason, it just act like a wick and it made it move in those two directions. And that's where the most damage took place. And as you can see by looking at the floor, some of the, the soft wood that was there that was made soft by the mold and the water, I chiseled it all out. So that's all been taken care of. And all the uh, damaged uh, drywall has also been removed. Some of the uh, two by fours in the wall behind it has also been taken care of. And that's not a load bearing or structural wall. There's a bedroom behind that. So that's an interior wall right there. So that's not a major deal. And uh, this area right there, it got damaged a little bit. There must have been a crack or something there because the water settled in there and caused more damage. So I chiseled all that out. And then uh, all this over here where the, the red stuff there that you see is the nails that are rusty because I soaked all this with bleach to make sure that no mold was left on there. And uh, the, the flooring is solid. And this black area right there is not mold. That's a tar kind of a thing that they used on the previous floor. When I ripped up the previous floor to do a re, uh, remodeling, that's an ugly tar that was left underneath it as an adhesive, the kind of stuff they used back in the 60s when the house was built. So that's something you don't need to worry about right there. So anyway, so what we need to do here is I already cleaned it up. I already bleached it. I got rid of all the soft material that was there. And now we need to start building it back up. And I'm going to show you where there is no need to rip all this flooring out of here like some contractors may want you to do. The floor is 90% still good. So all we need to do is build it back up so it doesn't look out of shape. It doesn't look like there's a valley or anything there. And we can build it back up, put the floor back down, fix the wall, and keep on going from there. So let me show you exactly how we're going to do that. All right, guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start building up the floor and take care of fixing all the areas that were damaged due to the uh, water seepage and the mold eating it up and stuff like that. And the damage is not that extensive. Like I said, maybe it's about an eighth of the flooring that's been damaged and made it a little, you know, wavy and uneven. 
but structurally the floor is still sound i stepped on this area quite a bit and i bounced up and down on it to see if there was any give to the floor and there is nothing whatsoever the floor is still structurally sound it's just that you know due to the damage it could be a little bit wavy and look kind of ugly so what we're going to do is we're going to build it up with this putty and this thing is really strong and solid when it dries so I'm just going to build it up with the putty, fill in any of the areas that were damaged, and the floor should be back to normal. And then I just have to cover it up with this 1 8 piece of plywood that you see right there in the corner. Because, see the tar, the black tar there, I didn't want to put my new flooring on top of that when I redid this restroom a few years ago. So that's why I put down this laminate flooring, which is only about an eighth of an inch thick. And then on top of that, I put down the original tiles that I wanted to see, you know, for the finished flooring. So that's why all I need to do is fix the plywood damage that was there and then put my new flooring on top of that and then put the tiles on top of that and this area should be mostly fixed. So the next step is once this dries all I have to do is sand it smooth and then I'm going to put a new piece of plywood right on top of that. So let's do that. All right, guys, so when the gray material of the Bondo was dry enough, I sanded it, smoothed it out. Then I cut a piece of plywood to put on top of it, and you see I installed it all right there. So put some uh, filler around the edges so we don't have any kind of unevenness telegraphing up to the floor. And that's what I'm pointing to. Everything's been smoothed out, filled into the wall back there. And now all we have to do is put the floor tiles on top of that and continue fixing the wall from there. So let's take care of that. All right, so now we're going to take care of doing some wall repair, and we're going to fix this missing part of the drywall right there, and it's not such a big deal. And I put this piece of wood back there because the wall is a little bit wonky, like I said, there's some damage back there. But we don't need to see that, we don't need to worry about it. I just put that piece of wood there to make it more even to put the drywall on top of that. So I'm going to fill that in right now, I'm going to screw it in place, put the mesh on top of it, fill it in with some uh, drywall compound, and continue working from there. So let's go ahead and screw that in there and keep on going. All right, guys, so here we are where basically I put a couple screws on there to secure the two pieces of drywall. One screw on the bottom part there to hold it in place, and then one screw on the edge of the top wall because you don't want that to start moving on you. If they, either one of them starts moving, you're going to get cracking along there, and you definitely don't want that. So the more secure it is, the better. Then you take the uh, tape mesh right there and put that on top of it, and that's going to help you, you know, to keep the joint compound and all that together over that gap that we have there. And I prefer to use the tape instead of the paper. You can use either one. I just prefer that one because it holds the joint compound, which is what I'm showing you. Holds the joint compound in between the little mesh holes all the better, where the other one is just kind of a piece of paper. So all you do now is go through and put that in there, put some pressure on it so it squeezes in between the mesh and the holes and everything and you get a nice fill material built up in there. And then we're going to fill all this up with multiple different layers, three, four, five, whatever it takes. Don't try to build it up too quickly, build it up little by little and that way you get a nice buildup of material. And then we'll come back when I have that all filled up and we'll sand it down and carry on from there. So I'll come back in a little bit when I have several layers built up. All right, guys. So as you see, I applied several different layers of the joint compound, built it all up bit by bit. And I didn't film it all because it's kind of boring just showing you me applying it with a spatula over and over and over again. So now we're going to go through and we're going to sand it all nice and smooth. And you have to basically, you know, look and feel and get a sense for making sure that the wall has been evened out to the point where you don't see a big bulge there or a big transition or anything like that between the areas. You have to build out the joint compound about two to three inches into the wall, whatever is the existing area, and then you feather it all out so nobody can see what took place there. You definitely don't want to have a big jump between one area and the other because that'll make it very, very obvious. So there you go. I smoothed it all out, and then I marked right there where I'm going to be filling it in with the little piece that I have there for the trim piece. So I cut that out there, have it ready to go, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of uh, caulking behind it to act as a glue, as a bonding agent, to hold it all in place and fill in any possible voids or anything behind that. And it's easier to attach the nails ahead of time, that way you don't have to struggle with holding the molding, holding the nails, and nailing, since this is a, kind of a tight area, especially in my situation. 
So uh, I'm kind of like hunched over on my knees and so forth with the camera right there. So it's a little difficult to do all this stuff. Really, really uh, awkward. So anyway, I ran a line there, so I made sure that the floor and everything was nice and level and the molding was going to be level and not going either uphill or downhill. You definitely don't want to have something visual that looks funny later on after you're done. So let's install this guy right now and keep going from there. All right, so continuing right along, like I said, fill this in with some caulking. That way you get a nice tight seal on there. And it squeezes out. That's all right. It totally squeezes out. That's perfectly fine. And that way you get a nice bond from behind the area instead of trying to squeeze it in from the front after you install the molding. So that's one thing I've learned over time. Fill it in from the back. That way you get a much better filler and a much better bonding for all this. And that way we'll pull it in right now. It'll squeeze out. You clean it up and you're all done. So let's put this in here nice and tight. And what I'm saying is right there, that is going to squeeze out perfectly fine. That way you get a better seal since it's inside the molding instead of on the outside trying to squeeze it in. So now we put that in there, get it nice and tight against the wall, nail it in place, and then we just remove the excess. And as you can see, in some places it didn't squeeze out much, some places it did. And then in those places we have to go back and fill it in a little bit later on. And that's it. That's the whole reason for doing that. You can find where you have either you know too much or too small a gap then now we go back fill in the little nail holes fill in that little corner with caulking and we smooth it all out and we're done so we'll come back in a few days after all this is dried thoroughly and fill it in some more all right so here we are it's been a few days everything has dried up nicely and as you see i applied a couple more layers of caulking basically just to get everything nice and smooth across the top the sides the bottom everywhere get everything looking as the way we want it to look when it's all finished and i sanded off the molding right there you see i feathered it all out made everything look nice and proper and then what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and put some primer on there everything's been filled in on that joint there because you don't want to see a joint so we're going to fill it all in right now with primer and then continue on to put some paint after the primer dries. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so here we are a few days later where I applied several coats of that white paint uh, on top of the primer that you saw me do previously. And then I let, allowed all that to dry, went through, put down the floor, as you see right there, just a couple of pieces of tile. It wasn't that big a deal. I'm sure you know how it is to just cut some tile and put it down. This is the plastic tile, so they're very easy to apply. And then I went through and put some caulking afterward just to seal up all the edges, all the flooring around the shower and so forth. I previously had scraped out all the caulking around the shower and so forth to make sure that I could get a nice tight bond this time and we should not have any more water leaking coming out of there. But as you see, it looks like new. Wasn't that hard to do. Very easy to do. Once you paint it all up, everything looks like new all over again. Looks really, really good. Didn't have to call a contractor, a handyman. Didn't have to rip out the floor. Didn't have to spend a bundle. Didn't have to do any major, you know, reconstruction or any of that kind of stuff whatsoever. So you can take care of this yourself if you really want to do it, or you can pay someone to do it. But like I said, don't let them rip you off. Don't let it make it into a big deal. It's a real small project. You can take care of it yourself. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.